Welcome back to our concept building design video series. Today we're going to look at how to set up design drivers for your buildings, those being surfaces and grids. These surfaces are parametric and everything that we build on top of them will update as the surfaces change. This is Imagine and Shape. It's a powerful subdivision surface modeling application. Today we're not going to be doing subdivision surfaces, but we're still going to be building surfaces interactively using the different commands. The first thing we're going to do is do the tower geometry. And so, so I've made a cube here, and now I'm going to go through and sculpt it into place. Up in the upper left-hand side of the screen, we see the tools palette. In Imagine and Shape, you have many different ways to manipulate and sculpt your geometry. Uh, you can select by face, you can select by edge, you can select by vertex, and those options are found on the right side of that tools palette. On the left hand side, you have different ways of controlling the robot. The robot is the manipulator that you see me manipulating on the screen here. And then there are different types of manipulations that you can make on these surfaces. Uh, that little shortcut there, the right click shows the contextual menu. And then you can do you can select all elements from that contextual menu. Towards the middle of the tools palette, there's translate, rotate, affinity, or scale. There's also attenuation, which shapes and sh and creates smooth surfaces from an edge from the cage of the subdivision surface. When you select all, you can translate, you can rotate, you can scale, and then with the robot you have you have six different controls methods. You can drag according to the axes. You can drag according to the X, the Y, or the Z. Or you can do it by plane. So if you grab at that little arc between axes directions, you can scale, move, or rotate in that plane. What I'm doing here is just shaping the surfaces into a design of two opposing towers. Uh, you can take as much freedom as you like in shaping these towers, uh, but for me, I was interested in this opposing view, one taller than the other, thinking of uh, two towers in dance. Uh, then this third shape is going to form a bridge between the two of them. So it's going to be elevated somewhere towards the middle of the two towers. Uh, and I want it to scale and, sh and grow and, and, sh and bridge these two towers in, a, in multiple stories. Here's the finished product. It needs a little cleanup along the edge so I can select the vertex and, and shape it into place. After reviewing this in the context of the site, I realized that I've actually done it backwards. So very quickly in, in warp speed, you see me tweaking that design so that it comes back to place. Now that the towers are shaped into a design that I like, I'm going to build the base pedestal. So I've switched applications back to building space planning and I've already used a sketch to draw profiles, profiles of the base pedestal. One profile represents the bottom pedestal and one profile represents the top pedestal. So I'll use the pad command to extrude a solid body using the base boundary curve as, a, as an input profile sketch. Next, I'm going to use the upper base curve to create a second pad. And now what's nice about the pad command is I have two types of limits. I have an extrude direct, and if I have a first extrude limit, and then I have a second extrude limit. And by changing the positive, negative values there, I can have it that pad using a sketch on the XY plane, but start at a couple of meters above ground. And so that's going to form my base. With my surface drivers in place, 
Now I'm going to make a few level drivers, a few planes that are going to control the height of my, my buildings. In order to organize my tree, I'm going to create a couple of geometric sets, and I'm going to reorder these geometrical sets so that there's some logical structure to my specification tree. I'll rename them driver planes and driver grids, because after I've built my, my planes, I'm going to place grids on top of them. Those are going to be building grids that are going to serve to organize the interior of my building and also the structural elements that I place on them later. So at this point, it's a good idea to have a concept of what you're going to build as a structure so that you sketch your grids in a way that meet that structural design criteria. So I have my offset planes that have been offset from the XY, and now I'm going to make a sketch. Before I make my sketch, I'm going to intersect these surfaces so that I have the boundaries of my design surfaces that can be projected into my sketch. I'll project these intersect curves into my sketch so that my grids that support my structure are a set distance from the edge of my building. Now that my intersections are done, I can go back to building space planning where I will create my sketch. One trick with building space planning, you need to first select the plane that you want to use as a sketch support before you start the sketch. Otherwise, it will use the XY plane as a default. So I've made my sketch, and now I'm going to project those intersect curves into my sketch. If I don't project them into my sketch, I can't reference my sketch to those curves. I also made them construction geometry so that Katia does not recognize those lines as a part of my sketch. I've already done this, so I'm going to skip ahead and show you what that looks like. Those my, there are my intersect curves. There is my fully constrained sketch referencing those intersect curves and that sketch will then become my structural grid. I did the same thing for the other side. So here's the example for the taller tower. And I've done that for the bottom as well. What I'm doing now is just reorganizing my tree. I'm taking sketches from a different geometrical set that's hidden, and I'm moving them into a geometrical set that's visible. So here you see my sketches for my tower and my sketches for my base. They overlap so that the sketches from my tower are projected into the sketches for my base so that the grids align. That's going to make sure that the columns in my base are in exactly the same location as the columns in my tower. With my grids sketched, I'm going to do a little cleanup of these surfaces now so that they are the proper height, so that the bottom has been trimmed and the top has been trimmed. In order to do that, I need to first make a geometrical set, make sure that my tree is properly organized. Now I'm going to find my imagine and shape surfaces. And using my planes that I defined for the, to control the elevations, I'm going to do a, a split operation. So split is found in imagine and shape. I select my surface, and I'll select my planes to do the, the splitting at the upper elevation and the lower elevation. And I'll do the same thing here for my ta taller tower. Now my surfaces have been split. And the last one that needs to get split is then the, the middle bridge surface. Now that these surfaces are cleaned up, I can take them into building space planning. I can make these building masses, and then I can start to do architectural modeling on top of them.